So what information can we get from Raman spectroscopy? Well, the characteristic Raman frequencies enable us to determine what the material is. So we can determine um, whether it's organic, whether it's inorganic, and we can actually determine specifically its uh, chemical composition. So here we can easily determine between MOS2 and um, MLO3, for instance. The uh, changes in the frequency of the Raman peak are indicators of local stress and strain, okay? So the vibrations in the material are affected uh, by the surrounding molecules and atoms. If we clump them all up or separate them all apart, it changes the energy very slightly. This causes the, um, the Raman band to shift, and as a result, we can use this to measure strain. We can also do something called polarized Raman measurements, and these measurements allow us to identify the crystal symmetry and the orientation of the sample. So for example, we can look at the orientation of CVD diamond grains. We could also look at the, uh, the polytypes of material. So if we analyze the material, we could determine if it's in its cubic form or its hexagonal form, for example. The uh, width of a round peak is a good indicator of uh, quality of crystal or sample uniformity. In an ideal world, all the molecules or atoms would have equal spacing. And as a result, the round band would be infinitely sharp. In reality, we do our measurements at room temperature, so there's some broadening as a result of the Boltzmann distribution that the uh, material sees, and this gives us a finite width. But if we start to add defects to our material or expose it to different stress and strains, we'll see this peak broaden, and we can use this to gauge the amount of plastic deformation in the material. Finally, uh, the intensity of the round peak can be used as a method to characterize amounts of material. So if we probe a, a thin film, we can use the intensity of the Raman peak to gauge actually how thick the film is and if there's any variation along its uh, surface.